All right, so in this video, we're going to look at number 35. Um, so we've got this triangle here, and it tells you what lines form them. And it asks if the triangle is isosceles. So if you look at the picture, uh, you might be able to tell that these three intersection points look awfully convenient. They look like lattice points. And if I'm going to eyeball it, it looks like 8, 6, 1, negative 1. And negative one, one, two. Uh, but how do you know those are the lattice points? Those are the actual intersection points of those three lines. So uh, one easy way to check would be to plug them into Desmos. So I've done the Desmos uh, website here. And uh, I'm just going to plug in those three equations. One of them was 3x plus 2y equals 1. One of them was y equals x minus 2. And one of them was negative 4x plus 9y equals 22. There are my points. And then let me zoom out just a little. Um, and let's find the intersection. So one of them was 8, 6. That's good. That's the one that we wanted. Uh, one of them was one, negative 1, 2. And one of them is negative 1, 1. So those are the points that we want. OK. Uh, so let's get the length. Okay, so now we know these points are right. By the way, actually, that's one way of getting the three points. Uh, let's say you didn't have a calculate or a graphing calculator or anything. If you had to do this by hand, you, in order to find the intersection of two lines that you have the equations for, you would need to use, uh, you would need to solve this two over two equation to find the intersection. Of these two lines right here. So in order to do that, you'd have to use this common solution, elimination. Some people call it elimination, or substitution. And in this case, I'll simply use something like that line right there. So this would turn to 3x plus 2 plus 2 equals negative 1. And if you solve that out, you end up with 5x plus 4 here equals negative 1. I'm skipping a little bit here. X is negative 1. And then you take that negative 1 and plug it back into either equation and solve for y. There's the second equation that's way over here. Okay. So then you know these two lines intersect. So these two lines intersect. Sorry about the writing. It's not easy to write on the screen. At negative 1, 1. So that ends up being this point right here. You can do that with, um, like if you did negative 4x plus 9y, third equation and the second equation, you can solve this the same exact kind of way. And if you work that one out, you end up with uh, the 8, 6 point. And then the third set would be the first equation and third equation. solve that system, you're going to want to probably use the elimination method. And you might remember that uh, the idea is that you're trying to get rid of either the x's or the y's if you add straight down. So when I look at these equations, I think, well, if I multiply the top one by 4 and the bottom one by 3, then I would get 12x plus 8y plus 4 on top. And on the bottom, I get negative 12x plus 27y equals 66 on the bottom. And then if I add straight down, the x's cancel. The y's turn into 35y. Constants added up, it's 70, so y ends up being 2. And you can take that 2 and plug it into either of the original equations to get your x value. So like 3x plus 2 times 2 plus 1. And if you work that out a little bit, you'll end up with uh, x equaling, what is it there, negative 1. Wait, did I mess that up? No, oh, that's right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was looking at this thinking that was the y and this was the x. Yeah, so negative 1, 2 is the point that you get out of that. So that's this third point over here. Okay, so anyway. That's kind of 
detail oriented. Um, what we need is is the triangle isosceles. So you need the three lengths, and you can either use the distance formula or you can use Pythag. Um, I'll draw in these actual triangles here so you can use that. But distance formula is okay too. And uh, the reason I do this is we're going to end up boxing these uh, shapes that we get a lot in class um, because it ends up coming in handy for lots of other things besides just calculating lengths. But if you figure out these kind of slope triangles going around here, uh, we got a four and a nine, a seven and a seven, a two and a three. And then if you did pi back on each set, you got two squared plus three squared equals this thing squared. And this ends up being root 13. So I'll work this out over here. We'll call this uh, C, A, and B, right? So uh, two, actually, let me not do that because we're going to use Pythag. Those will all be hypotenuse. So let's call it uh, C1, C2, C3. So two squared plus three squared equals C1 squared. If you work that out, you'll end up with root 13 C1. If you did four squared plus nine squared equals C2 squared, work that out, you'll end up with root 97 for C2. And then if you did the same thing for C3, seven squared plus seven squared equals C3 squared, whoops, C3 squared, then you'll end up with root 98 C3. So our three side lengths here are this one's root 97, this one's root 98, and this one is root 13. So even though these last two sides are awfully close, they're not equal. So not an isosceles triangle. All right. I hope that helps a little bit. I'm going to let us stop recording. Oh, there we go.